Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Hey, Shalom Israel, Mosai and Christ Bless. This is Captain Mattathias. I'm Officer Losias. All right, so this is uh, 15 minutes with the captains. We're going into Moab is my wash pot. All right, you're seeing a lot of persecution against our people out there in uh, China today about this coronavirus. But let's see what the Bible says about Moab. All right, give me Genesis 19 and 29. Come on. The, the book of Genesis chapter 19 and verse 29. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain. Which cities is he talking about? Referring to Sodom and Gomorrah. Come on. That God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow mm -hmm. when he overthrew the cities in the which he Lot dwelt. In which Lot dwelt. All right, go ahead and jump down to verse 32. Verse 32. Come on. Come, let us make our father drink wine. Who is that? Those are the daughters of Lot. Mm -hmm. All right, so they said, come and let us uh, have our father get drunk. Come on. And we will lie with him. And we will what? We will lie with him. They will lie with him, meaning have sex with their father. Come on. That we may preserve seed of our father. Mm -hmm. And they made their father drink wine that night. And the firstborn went in and lay with her father. And he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. So Lot had no idea what was going on. Read on. And it came to pass on the morrow, the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesterday night with my father. Mm -hmm. Let us make him drink wine this night also, and go thou in. And lie with him. All right. So she already lay with him. So she said, the next the next daughter or the next child, you know what? Since you did it, I'm going to do the same thing. Read on. That we may preserve the seed of our father. Read. And they made their father drink wine that night also. Mm -hmm. And the younger arose and lay with him. And he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. Read on. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. So both of his daughters was pregnant by their father read on and the firstborn bare a son and called his name moab called his name what moab mm -hmm. the same is the father of the moabites unto this day until this day come on and the younger she also bare a son and called his name benami uh-huh the same is the father of the children of ammon unto this day so what do we see here we see the uh origin okay of the ammonites and the Moabites, those are the what? Japanese and Chinese today, present day. If you don't believe it, just continue to follow along, okay? From there, give me the book of Numbers chapter 21, verse 13. The book of Numbers chapter 21 and verse 13. Come on. From thence they removed and pitched on the other side of Arnon, mm -hmm. which is in the wilderness that cometh out of the coast of the Amorites. Uh-huh. For Arnon, for, for Arnon is the border of Moab. You see that says, for Arnon is the border of Moab. Go ahead and take a look at this map right here. All right, so it says, uh, for Arnon is the border of Moab. So that's where they originally dwelt, okay? But something happened. Give me the book of Ezekiel, all right, chapter 25. All right, we're gonna read, start at verse four, Ezekiel 25 and four. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 25 and verse four. Come on. Behold, therefore, I will deliver thee to the men of the east for a possession. Start at verse 3, actually. Read Ver that. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. And say unto the Ammonites, Hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God, because thou saidest, Aha, against my sanctuary mm -hmm. when it was profane, and against the land of Israel when it was des desolate. So, all right, said the Ammonites, the Moabites said the same thing. They scoffed or laughed or 
um, they were happy when they saw the destruction of Jerusalem. Read on. And against the house of Judah. Come on. When they went into captivity. Read verse 4. Behold, therefore, I will deliver thee to the men of the east. You see that? They will be delivered to the men of the east. So meaning what? Because they uh, disrespected the children of God, the Most High God put a curse on them and said, no longer will you dwell at the coast of Arnon. Now I'm going to move you. I'm going to scatter you over into a further east country. Read on. Behold, I would therefore deliver thee to the men of the east for a possession. Come on. And they shall set their palaces in thee uh -huh. and make their dwellings in thee. They shall eat thy fruit and they shall drink thy milk. Start at verse, jump down to verse 8. Come on. Verse 8. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Moab and Seir do say. When it says Seir, that's referring to the uh, Edomites or the right. Idumeans, the present day Caucasians today. Read it again. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Moab and Seir do say, behold, the house of Judah is like unto all the heathen. All right. So they since they want to speak evil of the children of God, read. Therefore, behold, I will open the side of Moab from the city. So he's going to open the side where they used to dwell in the coast of Arnon, read. From his cities, which are on his frontiers, the glory of the country, Beth Jesh Imoth and Baalaman. And kirat them. Watch this. Unto the men of the east with the Ammonites. So they also, they're also going to get sent over to the uh, men of the east. Okay. And that's where they dwell today. That's Asia. You have China, which is the bigger landmass, And you have Japan, but it's on the outer coast. Okay. Further east. Read verse uh, 10 again. Unto the men of the east with the Ammonites, mm -hmm. and will give them in possession. Give them in possession, read. That the Ammonites may not be remembered among the nations. That means what? No longer will anybody call them Moab and Ammon. Now they're going to call them Chinese and Japanese. Mm. Their original names will no longer be on the earth, okay? From there, give me Zeph Zephaniah chapter um, 2. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 8. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. I have heard the reproach of Moab and the revelings of the children of Ammon. You see that the Most High God has heard their reproach, how they speak evilly against the children of God. Come on. Whereby they have repro reproached my people. Whose people? My people. Read. And magnify themselves against their border. Against their border. They're doing the same thing today. All right. You can go ahead and pull up the article about what they've done uh, to our people over there, the so-called Nigerians and Igbo, which are our people, all right? They are banning them. They're kicking them out of their homes. They're telling them they can't go into restaurants, okay? They're treating them like they aren't even human from there. Let's go to 1 Samuel 14 and 47. Let's see what name the Most High has for this particular people. 1 Samuel 14, 47. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 14 and verse 47. Come on. So Saul took the kingdom over Israel Come on. and fought against all his enemies. All his enemies. Read. On every side. Watch this. Against Moab. Against who? Against Moab. Notice how he mentions them first. Okay. Even when you read Psalms 83, it's always Edom, Moab, and the Arabs. It's always those top three. Okay. Read this. Uh, read this again. So Saul took the kingdom over Israel and fought against all his enemies Come on. on every side, uh -huh. against Moab and against the children of Ammon Read. and against Edom mm -hmm. and against the kings of Zobah and against the Philistines. And whithersoever he turned himself, he vexed them. All right. From there, let's go to the book of Psalms 108. Okay. Psalms chapter 108. And I want you to start at verse uh, 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 108 and verse 1. Come on. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise, even with my glory. Awake, palstery, and harp. I myself will awake early. Mm -hmm. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. Come on. I will sing praises unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great above the heavens, <coughs> and thy truth reacheth unto the clouds. Read. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, and thy glory above all the earth, mm -hmm. that thy beloved may be delivered. That's the key, that thy beloved, who are the beloved of God? The Israelites, that thy beloved may be delivered, uh, even in this time and most importantly in these last days. Read. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, and thy glory above all the earth, that thy, that thy beloved may be delivered, Read. save with the right hand, mm -hmm. and answer me. 
God has spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice. I will divide Sechem and meet out the valley of Succoth. Verse 8. Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. Mm -hmm. Ephraim also is the strength of my head. Judah is my lawgiver. Right, just going into God's people. Watch verse 9. Moab is my wash pot. It says what? Moab is my wash pot. Come on. Over Edom, I will cast out my shoe. Mm -hmm. Over Philistia, will I triumph. And that uh, Phil Philistia, Phil Philistia, that's going into Palestine. Now, it said Moab is my wash pot. Give me that definition real quick. Um, uh, wash pot. This is studylight.org. Mm -hmm. Moab is my wash pot. A pot wherein to wash my feet. A vessel of dishonor. You see that? That's a vessel of dishonor. All right. To say that they're your wash pot, that means they're beneath us. Okay. They're nothing to God. All right. From there, I want you to go to Numbers chapter 24. Numbers chapter 24. Remember, it's a common theme when it comes to particular nations in the scriptures. Okay. Certain nations are on the most size hit list more than others. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give me the book of Numbers chapter 24, verse 16. The book of Numbers, chapter 24 and verse 16. Come on. He had said, which heard the words of God mm -hmm. and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. All right, here's the vision. Watch this. I shall see him. That him is talking about Christ. Read. But not now. Mm -hmm. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob mm -hmm. and a scepter shall rise out of israel that's going into rulership read and shall smite the corners of moab and shall do what smite the corners of moab and as you as you, as we continue to live and see things play out we can see why that the, why these nations mm -hmm. are on the top of the most size hit list seeing how they're persecuting our people on a daily basis uh read on and edom shall be a possession Seir also shall be a possession. You see that? Once again, that's Edom. Remember in Ezekiel 25, it says Seir, right? One in, the, one in the same. Read that again. And Edom shall be a possession. Come on. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies. Uh-huh. And, and Israel shall do violently. And Israel shall do valiantly. From there, give me the book of Isaiah 63. Going into what? That, uh, that vessel of dishonor. Remember, he's going to cast his shoe uh, over Edom. Watch this, Isaiah 63. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 63 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Who is this that cometh from Edom uh -huh. with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel. Come on. Traveling in the greatness of his strength mm -hmm. that I speak in righteousness, might, mighty to save. Read. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? Come on. And thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat. Mm -hmm. I have trodden the wine press alone. You see that? That says treadeth. How do you tread something? You do that with your feet. Right. Okay. You tread something with your feet. That's what I say. You, hey, Moab is God's wash spot because when he come back, when he comes back, that's exactly what he's going to be doing. He's going to be treading them, stomping them, putting them to death. Okay. It's going to be right. much bloodshed. Okay. Uh, from there, give me the book of Jeremiah chapter 48. I'm going to show you that. Jeremiah chapter 48 and verse 38. The book of Jeremiah chapter 48 and verse 38. Come on. There shall be lamentation generally upon all the housetops of Moab. Of who? Of Moab. Watch this. And in the streets thereof. Come on. For I have broken Moab like a vessel wherein is no pleasure. You see that? Like a what? Like a vessel wherein there is no pleasure. That's going into what? That's the wash pot. They're a vessel like there is no. No, nobody want to um, put their hands in a um, vessel that somebody's washing their feet in. That's disgusting. Right. That's the same way he's going to treat Moab right here. Read it again from the top. There shall be lamentation generally upon all the housetops of Moab. Come on. And in the streets thereof, for I have broken Moab like a vessel wherein is no pleasure. Come on. Saith the Lord. Read on. They shall how, saying, how is it broken down? How hath Moab turned the back with shame? Mm -hmm. So shall Moab be a derision and a dismay to all them about him. Right, because they're saying what? That China's supposed to be the next great superpower. Mm. So in that day, they're going to be like, how is this even possible? How could, how could uh, this happen to them? Read on. Verse 40. For thus saith the Lord, behold, he shall fly as an eagle mm -hmm. and shall spread his wings over Moab. Read. Keroth has, is taken and the strongholds are surprised. Mm -hmm. And the mighty men's heart in Moab 
at that day shall be as the heart of a woman and her pain. Right. No more pride is going to be with Moab. They ain't going to be treating us like that no more because the Most High is going to send his son, Jesus the Christ, and he's going to put all of that to an end. Read on. Verse 42. Come on. And Moab shall be destroyed from being a people. You see that? Moab's going to be destroyed from being a people. All right. Um, this is going into that prophecy that got moved to the east, but this is also going into future prophecy as well. Give me verse 46. Verse 46. Come on. Woe be unto thee, O Moab, the people of Chemosh mm -hmm. perished, for thy sons are taken captives, and thy daughters captive. Yet will I bring again the captivity of Moab in the latter days. You see that? That's how we know. We understand yeah. that, yeah, they got pushed to the east, but we understand, guess what? In the latter days, same thing's going to happen to them, okay? From there, let's drop that. Let's go to uh, 2 Ezra 15. We almost done. 2 Ezra 15, and I want verse 46. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 15 and verse 46. Come on. And thou, Asia, that art partaker of the hope of Babylon. That's the key right there. Notice, you always saw what? Edom with Seir. Edom with Edom. I'm sorry, you always saw Moab with Seir. You always mm -hmm. saw Moab with Edom or what or whatnot. I want you to read this again. I'm sorry. And thou, Asia, art thou partaker of the hope of Babylon. The partaker of the hope of Babylon. That's not talking about actual ancient Babylon. That's talking about the daughter of Babylon, mm -hmm. which is the United States of America, a.k.a. Right. Edom. Read. Right. Art the glory of her person. You see that? They, they're hand in hand. One and two. All right? They're in cahoots. Majority of everything... That America has comes from China. Mm. Okay, read on. Woe be unto thee. The Bible says woe. Woe means destruction. Come on. Thou wretched, because thou hast made thyself like unto her. You see that? Y'all wanted to follow Edom, and you already understand what's going to happen to Edom. So if you want to follow down those footsteps, the same thing's going to happen to you. Come on. And has decked thy daughters in whoredom. Uh-huh. That they might please and glory in the lovers. So that's you taught you taught your people to follow after America. Come on. Which have always desired to commit whoredom with thee. Mm -hmm. Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works. You see that? That's hated. When you read that mm -hmm. in um Revelation 17, it talks about how the whore will be hated, and all the nations would turn on the whore. Read. And inventions, therefore saith God. I will send plagues upon thee. You see that? And the Most High God has started that. All right? He sent plagues on these heathens, especially you Moabites. All right? The, uh, bloodshed uh, in Italy and in Asia has been uh, monumental. Okay? The, that's the Most High doing that. Don't give credit to man. That's the Most High doing that thing. Read. I will send plagues upon thee, widowhood, poverty, famine, sword, and pestilence mm -hmm. to waste thy houses with destruction and death. To waste thy house with destruction and death. Come on. And the glory of thy power shall be dried up as a flower. So when it comes to you going to be the next great superpower, mm. it's not going to happen. Right. It's not going to happen because the Most High God says that the last great superpower is going to be Edom and then it's going to be the Israelites. That's all right? right. From there, give me the book of Jeremiah 25. I'm going to show you something. All right. For you prideful nations out there, for you Moabites who think that you can treat the children of God any type of way. And nothing's going to happen to you. I got a scripture for you. Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 17. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah chapter 25 and verse 17. Come on. Then took I the cup at the Lord's hand mm -hmm. and made all the nations to drink unto whom the Lord had sent me. Watch this. To wit, Jerusalem and the cities of Judah and the kings thereof and the princes thereof to make them a desolation and an astonishment and hissing and a curse. As it, is, as it is this day. Why? The Most High God did this to the Israelites as a form of punishment because we broke God's laws. Understand that. This ain't got nothing to do with the other nations. This is between the relationship of God and his children. All right, from there, jump down to verse 21. Verse 21. Come on. Edom and Moab and the children of Ammon. It says Edom, Moab, and the children of Ammon. For the sake of time, jump down to verse 29. Verse 29, mm -hmm. for lo, I began to bring evil on this city, which is called by my name. So we read about that early up in the chapter, right? He would bring evil upon the city of Jerusalem. Read. And, sh and should ye be utterly unpunished? So Edom, Moab, and Ammon. Mm -hmm. So you think that if I'm going to bring evil to my own people, right. you think you're going to go unpunished? Read. Ye shall not be unpunished, mm -hmm. for I will call for a sword upon all thy inhabitants of the earth. You see that thing right there? So judgment day is coming. Just stay tuned. Last scripture. Uh, give me Isaiah 49 and verse 10. All right, because we got our people scattered here in America, Africa, China, all throughout the whole world. Watch this. 
The book of Isaiah, chapter 49 and verse 10. Come on. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor the sun smite them. Mm -hmm. For he that hath mercy on them shall lead them. Even by the springs of the water shall he guide them. Who's that? It's going to be Christ, okay? Christ is going to be our God. He's going to be the one to uh, deliver us. Read on. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. And I will make all my mountains a way, and our highways shall be exalted. Read. Behold, these shall come from far. And lo, these from the north and from the west. Why? Because we've been scattered from far to the north and to the west. Come on. And these from the land of Simon. Sinem. It Sinem. says from the land of Sinem. What does that mean? It's going into China. All right. All right. Do your research, brothers and sisters. Okay, now, I'm going to go over to page 22. Bear with me a second. Now, let's take a look at this. I'm going to start at uh, where it says, This pedigree, strange to say, being also that of Isaac, the son of Abraham, who was the uncle of Lot. Abraham was the uncle of Lot. By this tree worked out on page 18, you will see at once that Japan and China versus Ben-Ami and Moab of old are of Shemitic origin. So the author is saying that the Japanese and the Chinese versus ben Ami and Moab of old are of Shemitic origin. Now, from there, where am I going to go? Hold on a second. Let me find the page. I'm going to go to page 17. Because I know y'all be arguing. Just, How do you know who's the Japanese and the Chinese? I don't accept that. What the hell is what you believe or accept? Less, I got proof right here. Uh, namely, only the highlighted part, namely that the Japanese are the children of Ammon. Can y'all read that? Namely, that the Japanese are the children of Ammon. Now, what about the so-called Chinese? Hmm, let's go to page 28. All right, here we go, highlighted part. I have a pamphlet of 40 pages by Sakana, dated 1906. It is the report of a lecture delivered at Exeter Hall, London on December 12, 1901, and deals with the arguments drawn from history and prophecy proving that China is Moab. <laughs> we used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth. 